And we've done a lot of solving of trig equations. Chapter 6, we solved trig equations. At the beginning of chapter 7, we solved them again. Now we've had identities, so now there's going to be solving trig equations with identities. We've done some of them already. But there are a couple of places that sort of they get tricky. And so I want to sort of summarize when identities are present, some of the strategies that we can use. And then we'll look at some examples where these strategies come up. And I'll just scroll down so that you can see the first example when you're done writing. I would say the first idea is sort of the main strategy. If you can ever change an equation so that it only has one trig function, either all sine, all cosine, even all cosecant, that's going to be really powerful for helping you solve it. But sometimes that can't be done. In the example that we have, we have cotangent and cos. There's no way to change cos just to cotangent or cotangent just to cos. So sometimes we have to use these last two strategies, which are changing to sine and cos and getting rid of fractions and factors. So in this case, I can change the cos, cotangent, sorry, to cos theta over sine theta. That creates a fraction, and if you have an equation that has a fraction, then you can get rid of the fraction by multiplying. For example, if I multiply this side by sine, then I have to multiply this side by sine. And multiplying the left side by sine gives us the opportunity to simplify, and your fraction goes away. That leaves us with the following equation. Cos theta equals 2 cos theta sine theta. And you had a question very similar to this on your first take-home quiz. And there was a number of people who made the following mistake on the first take-home quiz. Okay? And I'm going to even write both sides by cos, that will make this equation simpler. You need to factor, I'll write factor in capitals. So sometimes we have like, oh, I could get just sine if I divide both sides by cos. And that is a very smart Thing to do. However, it's dangerous because when you divide in an equation, there's something you're not allowed to divide by. You're not allowed to divide by zero. But sometimes we divide by zero without even knowing it. Like this is tricky, but I want first of all to point out that if cos of theta is zero, is this equation true? The left side would be zero. The right side would be 2 times 0 times sine theta. It would be 0. I hope you can see that when cos of theta is 0, this equation is true. If I divided both sides by cos of theta, I would accidentally sometimes be dividing by 0, and I would lose some of my solutions. So this note says if you want to divide, dividing and factoring are very similar, but factoring won't lose any of your solutions. So what does it look like to factor instead? Well, I'm going to make one side equal to 0. And then there's a common factor of cos of theta that I could take out. Then once it's factored, here's where it tells us, yes, cos of theta could be 0 but also that sine of theta could be one half. So when you get your first take-home quizzes back, we're going to see 
exactly how many of you thought of the dividing thing and how many of you thought of the factoring. And now some of you are desperately trying to remember what you did on a question like this. Okay? This is on our unit circle. The x coordinate is 0 at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. A half is on our unit circle. That's your pi over 6 family in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. Now, the next thing that becomes somewhat problematic in solving is now that we have these new formulas for 2 theta, there's going to be some times that you're going to solve an equation with a 2 theta that's multi-revolution, and other times that you're going to solve an equation with a 2 theta that's going to be a double angle identity, which adds some complexity. Up till now, if you had a 2 theta in a solving question, you'd be like, ooh, that's a multi-revolution question. I know how to do that. But now you have a choice. You can either maybe do it as multi-revolution, or maybe you should use a formula and change it. So this is an explanation of how those two are different and when you're going to use each one. So if the only trig function you have in a solved equation has a 2x, like in the first example here, then you would solve it like a multi-revolution question, where you would get suppose 2x by itself equals 3, 3 over 2. You'd rewrite your domain for 2x. So since x is between 0 and 2 pi, 2x is, is twice around from 0 to 4 pi. You ask yourself where you would solve for 2x. And you'd solve it over your new domain. So where is cos equal to root 3 over 2, that is your pi over 6 family in quadrant 1 and positive also in quadrant 4. That's the first time around. In the second time around, you add 2 pi to this one, you get 13 pi over 6. Add 2 pi to this one, you get 23 pi over 6. Then solve them all, pi over 12, 11 pi over 12, 13 pi over 12, and 24, 23 pi over 12. And that's a review of multi-revolution questions. For the one on the right-hand side, here you have a 2x, but it is not a multi-revolution question, because in the equation you have another trig function. On the right-hand side, we have a sine x. So in these types of questions, you're going to go to your formulas and say, OK, well, I can change sine 2x to 2 sine x cos x. This side is still equal to sine x. I notice I can simplify if I divide it, so I should factor instead. Move everything over to one side, make it equal to 0. Factor out the common factor of sine x. Here you would get sine x equals 0, and here you would get cos x equals 1 half. From your unit circle, your y coordinate is 0 at 0 pi and 2 pi, and your x coordinate is a half pi over 3 family in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. So we are going to end with example four. Sorry, was that too quick? Is everybody done? Okay. Similar idea. We see the double angle. 
But since there's another trig function present, we have to use one of our formulas. And sine 2x is nice because it has only one option. You have to change it to 2 sine x cos x. Now we look at the equation nicely. These twos would simplify. And we're left with lots of trig functions. Again, we're going to use the strategy of factoring. Notice there's a common factor of cos. So I factor that out. Which means that cos x could equal 0. And this part is a little bit interesting because if this bracket is equal to 0, that would mean that sine x would have to equal cos x. So we'll start with the easy one. When is your x coordinate 0? At pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And for this one, there's two ways you can go about solving it. One is just thinking about your unit circle. Is there ever a place on your unit circle where the y coordinate is equal to the x coordinate? Exact same value. Yes, you've got root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, right there at pi over 4. And also in quadrant 3, where they're both negative, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 2 over 2. So you could just think about it on your pi plate and say, I know it's at pi over 4 and in quadrant 3, 5 pi over 4. Or, and some people really like this, you could change this to one trig function. The way that you could change it to one trig function is a little clever. If you divided both sides by cos, you would get sine x over cos x is equal to 1. And sine x over cos x is just tan x. And then you're asking yourself, when is tan x equal to 1? Well, that's on our pi plates as well. That's your pi over 4 family. And when is tan positive? Quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. Can you see that solving this would give you those two answers as well? So there's two ways you could solve that part. Now, I would like you in your textbook to circle questions 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then I would like to, you to take out, you know, the sheet that we had all the proofs on? On the back side, there is a bunch of solving questions. And if you're looking for more practice, I would get you to, there's a bunch circled. You actually don't do the circled one. I'm going to tell you that I would like you to try questions 8 and 9, 11 and 12, 15, 21, 27, 29, and 31. Solving is probably the biggest part of the whole grade 12 course. Do you want a new one? And solving trig equations is in two units. It's in chapter 6 and in chapter 7. So I would probably say of all the topics we learned this year, this is considered the most important by the curriculum. Because we've done it the most. So for sure, you're going to get solving questions on your exam. So tomorrow, we're going to write our proofs quiz exactly in 24 minutes. And then we're going to correct it. And then after correcting it, I'm going to give you your last take-home quiz for this unit, which will have a free quiz online. And we have to decide when we're going to do our trig test. So we'll decide all of that tomorrow. Test will be next week. To we'll look at our schedule probably sooner than later. I'll also give you your review so you have an extra long weekend. 
hopefully you can get some practice and studying done in preparation for your test next week. Probably on Wednesday. That makes the most sense. Is Wednesday bad for any other subject areas? I don't know. Ooh, but then maybe we should, because then you've got to do your other take home quiz. You've got to hand it back. I have to mark it. I have to get it back to you. I don't know if I can have you hand it in and back to you by Tuesday. So we might have to do our test on Thursday. Do the take home quiz, have it due on Monday. That gives me time to mark it. Or I could just give everyone 100%. It's so much easier. Oh, and I did, there was an email sent out by the principal. So if you're thinking that you want to do that for the next year, you may need our sheet the last day to drop, but then you can still come to the class for the next year. So you might formally are in the class and still do all the assignments and still do everything for the end. Because you want, I would say, the best strategy is to stay in it right towards the end as much as possible. That makes it easier for you. But you have to drop it before the next year. Minus a negative will make that plus. And two times one is two. Oh, I mean, that was good. <laughs> and then you'd have a problem with that. That would be the Oh, I'm still recording. Look at that. It's going to be a nice end to that video.